Matt fans, welcome back. Today we are looking at Python, Anaconda, Google Earth Engine, and the mighty GMAP. I'm making this video in response to a number of comments that I've had on a previous video. And that video is called Python and Google Earth Engine in QGIS. Thanks very much to everybody who has commented. It really helps me to update my videos and put out response videos when I can. So apologies, it's taken me a bit of a long time to put this video together. But we've had some really good examples of error reporting in the comments where the error message itself is included. Now my plan for this video is to break it up into three sections. In the first section, we'll look at the troubleshooting process itself, and I'll walk you through the steps that I took in order to solve this problem. Hopefully that will help you develop your own troubleshooting process that you can use in the future. Next up, we'll take a look at virtual environments and Anaconda, and I'd just like to explain a little why they are a good idea. And finally, once we've installed GE Map into a virtual environment, we will use Jupyter and have some fun with GE Map and make maybe a little GIF of somewhere that I haven't yet decided. In terms of troubleshooting, people are having difficulty with conversion.py. And if we scroll down to where the error message is, we can see that conversion.py has got an import error, attempted relative import with no known parent package. Hmm, so where should we begin with this? Well, I know that I got the code from GitHub, so I'm going to go over to GitHub and take a look there. So here I am in GitHub and I've searched for GEE map. And when we get into the repo, this is what it looks like. We've got a bunch of different folders and a lot of files. And then we have the readme down here that tells us what this is. It's a Python package for interactive mapping with Google Earth Engine, IPy Leaflet and IPy widgets. Now what I did in my first video is I went into GEE map and I looked for the script that I wanted, which was conversion.py. And I got the raw version of that, and I just saved it to my computer with the name conversion.py. And then what I do is call that from the terminal and run it as I wished. Now, the good thing about GitHub is that you can build on code. So you put up uh, your maybe minimum viable product, and then you start adding to it, and the software evolves as you improve the code, refactor it, do all sorts of different things. Now, I released that video on the 20th of March, 2020. And one of the really cool things about GitHub is that we can go in and have a look at the history. So if I click on this history button, this will take us into the history of conversion.py. And if I scroll right down to the bottom, you can see for the commits on March 16th, let's have a look at what the code looked like there. And it looks like this. Okay, note the lines of code as well, 674 lines of code, and this is what it looks like. Now I've put together some screenshots so that you can see how the code evolves over time. So here's that first screenshot. And notice how the import statements are increasing in number and the lines of code are going up. In this screenshot, we're up to 942 lines of code. And then we get to this one where we've got 1,074 lines of code. And note the import statements, they're starting to get a bit unwieldy now. They're kind of coming off the bottom of the screen. So in GitHub, if I just go back to the history page, I can see all the commits again. And here on November 2nd, 2020, we've got one called Reorganize Modules. Now this one sounds like it might be affecting the import statements. So let's view this at this point in history. If I click on there and scroll down, you can see the import statements are really vastly reduced. And we've got this one at the bottom from dot common import and the asterisk means import everything. Now the dot here signifies a relative import and it's relative to the current package. Now if we go back to our error message that was so kindly reported, we can see here that the import error is attempted relative import with no known parent package. And it's this line from common or dot common import everything that the problem lies. So we're getting closer to finding a solution here. Back in GitHub, if I go back to the history page and have a look at all the commits, we can see this reorganized modules one. And if I click here on the code, then we can see in red, we have what was deleted from the previous commits and what has been added in green. 
So we can see loads of these imports have been deleted and then we just have this from dot common import everything. Now where is dot common? It said that it's a relative import which means it should be within our GE map. So let's just click on GMAP again to have a look at the whole repo. And if I click into GMAP, we can see here the common.py script. And if I click on that, so this is what common.py looks like. And at the top here, we have a useful explanation as to what this module does. It contains common functions for both Folium and IPy leaflet to interact with the Earth Engine Python API. Fantastic. We have a lot of import statements and then we get onto the functions themselves, which are usefully kind of subheaded, the authentication and initialization here. And we have about eight and a half thousand lines of code. Now, the safest thing to do would just be to install the whole of the GMAP package. And there's no need to be afraid of doing this. It's really easy and it ensures that our code is going to work much better than just cherry picking the parts we want. In this section, we've got quite a lot to get through. So first up, we're going to look at installing Anaconda. Then we'll create a virtual environment. And into that environment, we're going to install GMAP and then Jupyter. And once we've got Jupyter up and running, we're going to create a new kernel that's based on our new virtual environment. Now, before we dive into all of this, I'd just like to go over virtual environments, how they work and why they're useful. Now in this section, we're going to imagine that this orange box is our computer. This could be Windows, Mac, whatever it is. And we've got everything installed within this orange box. Now we start a new project and that project's going to be in Python. So we install Python on our computer. Our first project is called Project A and we're going to import GEMAP or install GEMAP 1.0. And we're going to install a bunch of other packages as well that we need to use. We write project A, it's all going swimmingly, it works, we're happy with that. And we put it to one side and come back to it when we need it. A few years pass and we start a new project called project B. And we decide to get the latest version of GMAP, which is now 3.9. There's been a ton of coding going on. So that's great. We uh, install some other packages as well and update some of the existing ones that we've got on our machine to the latest versions. And we write project B and that's all going well. Project B works and it does its job nicely. We need to use project A for something. So we go back to that. But because we updated GMAP in project B, it is on the same system. It's using the same version of Python. It's updated GMAP that project A is using as well. Now, moving from version 1 of GMAP to version 3.9, there's been some major changes to the code, and all of a sudden we find that Project A is no longer working. And this is where virtual environments come in. So we could set a virtual environment and have Project A running in that. We can section it off from the rest of our machine. That's what a virtual environment does. And we even have our own installation of Python in there. So any changes or updates we make to the packages in Project A will affect only Project A. We can do the same for Project B. So Project B is in its own virtual environment and the same again. If we update GMAP, it doesn't matter. It's only going to affect Project B. So these are fantastically useful when you're doing any kind of coding or development. It means that the virtual environment provides an environment specific to that project. So let's have a look at how we can set these up using Anaconda in Windows. To install Anaconda on your machine, you can just search for it using your favorite search engine. Go for the individual edition and then download it for your platform. I might have a slightly older version than the latest download. So if the interface looks a little different, don't worry too much about it. So here I've got Anaconda Navigator open. And what I'd like to do is create a new virtual environment. Currently I'm on the home tab, but if I go into environment, I can click there. And this is a list of all my many environments, probably far too many, could do with a spring clean. But I'm going to create a new one. So down at the bottom, I can hit this plus button and go for create. So I'm going to give it a name, which will be gmap underscore demo. And for the Python version, remember when we're creating a new virtual environment, it has its own installation of Python, which is pretty neat. So I'm going to leave that at 3.7 and I do not want to install R this time around. So I'll hit create. 
Now this type might take a little while, so just be patient. And there we go, GMAP demo has been created. So we've got that new virtual environment and these are all the packages that are so far installed on it. Now we'd like to install the GMAP package. So let's head back on over to GitHub and have a look at how we can do that. So here we are back in GitHub in the GMAP repo. And if we scroll down, there's a really nice readme. It's very well laid out, lots of linking. And if we just look at the contents, if I click on installation, that'll take us down to the installation instructions. Now we could just use pip to install GMAP, but as we're using Anaconda, we're going to use Conda and Conda Forge to install the necessary packages. We've already completed the first two lines. We used the Anaconda user interface to do this. So we've created a new environment and then we've activated that environment as well. So the next line, we're gonna use Conda to install GeoPandas and then we are going to install Mamba. Now Mamba is very similar to Conda. I don't want to get into the weeds with it, but basically it means we can install packages more quickly. And finally, we'll install GMAP. Back in Anaconda with our GMAP demo environment selected, I can choose the arrow and open terminal. And this will open up a terminal and you can see in brackets our GMAP demo environment is activated. Now I'll just type in Conda here to show that it's installed and we can get a list of commands that we can use with Conda here. So I'm just going to rearrange my windows a little bit here so that I can see the GitHub repo and my terminal. And the first line is to install GeoPandas. So we are installing a, a few extra things other than just GMAP, but uh, that is so that we can run all the demos that are available in the GMAP repo. So this will take a little while, just uh, be patient, but that looks like it is installed for me through the magic of video. And the next thing that we'd like to do is install Mamba. As I said, Mamba is a kind of rewrite of Conda and it is a little bit quicker. It uses multi-threading. And that little C switch in the command, that's for channel. And we're telling Conda that we'd like to download Mamba and install it from Conda Forge. So with Mamba installed, we can use Mamba to install GMAP and X-Array leaflet. Now, if you'd like to know more about Mamba and about Conda Forge and Conda itself, you can search for those and see what's up with them. So here's Mamba. It's going to install GMAP and X-Ray Leaflet for us. And again, this might take a little while, so just be patient. And there we have it. GMAP is installed on our GMAP demo environment. Fantastic. Now, just be aware that if you're using GMAP for the first time, you will need a Google Earth Engine account. So you can use your favorite search engine, search for Google Earth Engine, which is different to Google Earth. Click on the link and at the top right, you can just hit the sign up and follow that procedure. Now, I mentioned using GMAP in Jupyter Notebooks and when we're using Anaconda Navigator, it's really easy to add Jupyter Notebooks to one of our environments. So here I'm going to go to home and you can see that applications on GMAP demo. So I can choose any of my environments from here. Currently it's GMAP demo. That is what we would like. And let's have a look. We've got Jupyter Notebook right here. All I need to do is hit the install button and Anaconda Navigator will do its thing. Now that we've got Jupyter Notebook installed on the GMAP underscore demo environment, we could hit the button here that says launch and that will launch it. There's another way to get to the same thing as well. If we go over to environments and go to GMAP demo, use a little arrow and now we can open with Jupyter Notebook as well. So that'll open our environment on Jupyter Notebook. When it opens, it'll open in your regular browser and you should see it's running on localhost on port 8889. Now in here, I have a lot of Python notebooks that I've been working on and you probably won't if this is a new install. Now, if I want to start a new Jupyter Notebook, I can go to new and you can see here, I've got a lot of the environments that are available in Navigator available here. But what we don't have is GMAP demo. And I'll show you how we can add that as what's called a kernel to our Jupyter Notebook. 
To do this, I'm going to use the terminal again, and you can see that I've got that GMAP demo environment activated, and I'm going to add a line of code in here. That looks like this. We're going to use IPython, create a new kernel, and install it as the name GMAP demo. So when I run that, you can see that we have a new kernel installed, and it's going to be called GMAP demo. Back in Jupyter, if you go up to new, our new kernel won't be showing there yet. All you need to do is hit refresh, reload the current page, and then if I go over to new here and use the drop down, here we have our GMAP demo. Excellent. So I can create a new notebook with GMAP demo. I'm going to do that right now. This will open up, and what I would like to do is just check that GMAP is installed. Let's import GMAP and hit run. And no problems there at all. So that is all working. Congratulations, you have installed GMAP and you have also installed Jupyter. Now we get onto the fun part where we can actually use some of the GMAP code. We'll use one of the demos and make a GIF. Hey, well done for making it this far through the video. It's turned into a bit of an epic one. Now, before we start with some of the Jupyter Notebook examples from the GMAP GitHub page, if you've got a session of Jupyter running, just want you to quit out of it. So find it in your browser and just use the quit button. That will stop the server and we can shut down those pages of the web browser. So once again, here I am back in GitHub at the GMAP repo. Now I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. The GMAP repo is really good. It's very self-explanatory. I just kind of want to introduce you to some of the things you can do with it. So if we go into the examples folder here and we go to notebooks, we can see a whole bunch of IPy NB. So these are IPython or Jupyter notebooks that we can download and use in our own sessions. So this one's pretty good. I said we were going to make a time-lapse GIF. So number 39, this is what we'll use. And if I click on that, this will show us what the notebook looks like. Now there are loads of options in GMAP. You can open this in Colab, you can do all sorts of things, but we're going to run it in our own Jupyter session. So to get the raw code of this, I can click on raw. And again, there's a lot of different ways to download code from GitHub. This is just one. And I'll right click on the raw page and choose to save as. And I'm gonna save this in my downloads. I'll create a new folder called GMAP Notebooks. Now remember where you're saving this, you can save it anywhere on your computer, but I know that mine is in Downloads and GMAP Notebooks. And I'll leave the file name as it is. Okay. Now I need to switch back to Anaconda Navigator. And again, with our GMAP demo, I'm going to open the terminal. And here we can see GMAP demo Virtual environment is activated, and I'm currently in this location, C users user. And I want to change my directory, so I'll use CD, and I'll change to downloads. Okay, and what was the name of that folder that I just made? I'll change again, change directory to GMAP notebooks. And if I use DIR, directory to see what we've got in here. You should be able to see that we have got this 39 time-lapse IPy notebook. Now, because I've got this open in the terminal and we've got our GMAP demo virtual environment activated, I can use this command, Jupyter notebook, and that will fire up another Jupyter notebook session. And this will open in my default browser and it'll open in the location that I ran that command from. So by navigating to that directory where I'd saved the time-lapse notebook, I can run Jupyter from there and it will open in that location. So if I click on this time-lapse IPy notebook, 
then in here we can see all the code. Now currently it's running on a kernel of Python 3. Now I'd like to change this kernel and I want to change it to our GMAP demo. So I can do this by going up to kernel and I'd like to change kernel and go for GMAP demo. You can see that GMAP demo is now active up here. That is all good. Now, as I mentioned, this video has already become quite long. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through all the code, but what I am going to do is just go up to cell in Jupyter and choose to run all. And you can see that all these cells are running and they have run. So when this particular cell runs, this will draw our map and it focuses on the United States. And where should we go for? I'm going to look for Las Vegas. There's Vegas and just to the east of there, we should be able to see Lake Mead. Now I heard a story the other day about Lake Mead suffering from drought. So what I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle to set my area of interest. Okay. That is set. Further down the page, I can choose to fill in the title. So I'll call this Lake Mead. And you can select your red, green, blue combo. Currently, I think this is set to false color, so that's good for me. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. But you can play around with this drop down and select whatever you like. Frames per second, I'm gonna leave that at 10. That is fine. Start year 1984, end year 2020, start month is May, end month October, that's fine as well. Font color, so this is for our title. I can change that to whatever I want. I'll go for this red, make it a little bit lighter. Okay. And then we have a progress bar as well. This runs along the bottom and it shows how far through the GIF we are. I'll set that to red as well. And then further down, we have this little button called Create Time Lapse. And if I just click that, we should see that it is computing down at the bottom. It's generating a URL. And we are please waiting. And here we can see that the GIF image has been saved to my downloads and it's been given this name. And now the GIF is being added to the map. So let's go up to the map and check out what's happening. And there's our GIF. We can see the year ticking by up at the top. We've got our title down here. Maybe I could adjust that actually, but up to you what you choose to create animated GIFs of. But this is part of the power of GMAP. So I do encourage you to go and have a look at the repo on GitHub and see what you can do with it. Obviously, if you're here because you are having difficulty with the conversion.py, do have a look at the example of how to use that. Right, that's been a very long video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And if you would like to help the channel out a ton, then please share this video through your social networks. Other than that, nothing left to say apart from happy mapping.